I want to talk about revenge fantasies. They're normal, they're human, they're completely understandable. And if you're prepared to slow down and really pay attention, maybe they can lead you towards greater freedom and peace. My name's Ruthann. I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm an expert in relationships and issues of narcissism. And I want to tackle this incredibly difficult and challenging topic with some grace and compassion and dignity. So people often have revenge fantasies when they've experienced a great injustice. And revenge fantasies often serve a really important purpose. They can help us to feel powerful and strong in situations in which we were objectively vulnerable and weak. We may even enjoy fantasizing about hurting someone who has done so much hurt and harm to us. That doesn't make you a bad person. It's part of the human condition. It's normal. It's ordinary. Although I stress, please do not act on revenge fantasies. Now, whilst revenge fantasies can help you to feel powerful and strong, they can help you to feel less disgusted and less frustrated at your own weakness and your own humanity if you've been the victim of someone who's been very powerful and has treated you in a way that's extremely hurtful or has taken something from you. And when I work with people with revenge fantasies, it's not at all unusual that they've been victims of some terrible crime. They may have been sexually assaulted, violently assaulted. They may have witnessed someone close to them be seriously assaulted or even murdered. Um, They may have been victims of extreme abuse. Um, And so wanting revenge is a completely normal ordinary and understandable phenomenon and needing to feel a sense of power and control and strength is functional and completely understandable. When we embrace revenge fantasies, whilst it can kind of feel good to a certain extent to fantasize about power, about control, about justice, it also creates a prison in our own mind. We end up agitated, stressed, exhausted, and on edge, irritable. And that can also keep other people at a distance, make it difficult for us to get close to other people, can make it difficult for us to even comfort ourselves and experience a softness and a sense of acceptance of the pain and the suffering that we've been through. Sometimes I wonder if revenge fantasies are actually a way to avoid much more painful feelings of weakness, vulnerability, sadness, loss, and grief. So if you're experiencing revenge fantasies, here's what I suggest. I I, I suggest slowing down and allowing yourself to think, well, what was the injustice? And how do I really feel about it? Yes, I feel anger. And, And it's absolutely right that you feel angry about something where there's been an injustice or something terrible has been done to you. That's normal and healthy, but that anger tells you what you really care about, what it is that offends you, what it is that you most value. And maybe you value being treated with humanity and dignity. Maybe you value integrity and trustworthiness and you were betrayed. Maybe you value gentleness and kindness and you were treated with cruelty understanding what it was that really offends you and also understanding what the injury is to you and understanding the ways in which the injustice that you've experienced has affected you, how it's hurt you. Because if you can really draw close to the hurting parts of you, learn how to comfort your vulnerable side learn how to be present with your weakness, with your grief, with your sadness, with your loss. It can help to free you from the desire for revenge. If you can slow down and get in touch with those softer emotions, be present with yourself, give yourself love, comfort, compassion, softness, tenderness, 
and embrace the ways in which you were objectively vulnerable, objectively taken advantage of, put in a weak position. Now that can be really difficult to acknowledge, especially if you're someone who likes to see yourself as strong and independent and autonomous. But if you can get close to the the part of you that's been hurt, the part of you that's been wounded, and care for and nurture that part, that's often a much greater path to freedom and peace than fantasies of revenge, as understandable as those fantasies of revenge may be. Often fantasies of revenge do little more than create a prison in your own mind, and they keep you stuck. But if you can get close to, nurture, and care for the vulnerable and hurting parts of you, and really commit to doing things that are in your best interest, because it's probably not in your best interest to fantasize or take revenge. But what is in your best interest? How can you serve yourself? How can you give yourself greater peace of mind and greater freedom? What do you want to pursue? And maybe you've never experienced good relationships or friendships or the ability to pursue your own hobbies and interests. Maybe you have to rebuild from the ground up and it is damn hard work. But putting your time and energy into that and giving yourself the opportunity to really live well, to live a life that maybe you haven't even thought is possible. Give yourself those chances to live, to love, to breathe, to have freedom, to pursue things that are of importance and matter to you. And you can begin to create a life that's full and vibrant, even after some of the most tremendous experiences of hurt, abuse, and victimization. If you're in this situation, I appreciate that hearing this from me as a professional is difficult, but I can tell you I've had my own experiences of revenge fantasies. And I can also point you to someone else. Edith Eager is a Holocaust survivor and a psychologist who specializes in trauma. And she has had her own experience of revenge fantasies and injustice and victimization. Edith Eager refers to her grandchildren as her revenge against Hitler. She is the living embodiment of the best revenge being to live well, to give yourself the best chance of living a full and vibrant life of relationships, of creativity, of the things that are of value to you. I'll leave you with Edith Eager's words from her book, The Choice. The biggest prison is in your own mind and in your pocket you already hold the key, the willingness to risk, the willingness to release yourself from judgment and reclaim your innocence, accepting and loving yourself for who you really are, human, imperfect, and whole. I'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment. Subscribe if you'd like to hear more from me. I look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, take good care.